Hey y'all, this is uh, Pastor John Bryce, and uh, I am the fortunate pastor uh, to serve down in Alney at uh, St. James United Methodist Church. I was recently appointed there, July 1, and um, my main goal and my main vision is to meet people where they are. You all might think it's light and trite, but last night, uh, Francis, who also serves with me in the DS Bass, we received... Um, uh, a braille Bible because there's two members there that there's a member there that's legally blind and there's another one that's uh, that's blind as well and visually impaired we received a braille Bible and then two weeks ago we received a hundred free Spanish Bibles to you all that might be something that's small and easy but to me as this is my first time pastoring a church right here and having Spanish people in the audience while I'm up there reading from an English Bible they're looking at me like I'm crazy but this past Sunday they pulled out their Bibles and when I say Mark chapter five they can read mark chapter five and then francis make sure you get her in the picture because this is this isn't just a john thing this isn't i the ds had to come along i remember there was one day we did a cleanup and ds bass came up and says all right cool where's the lawnmower mm -hmm. then there's times when i pulled up the carpet you know i'm fortunate enough to have some other skills and i pulled up the carpet and francis said all right let me get the hammer to nail back down the nails so we can use the hardwood floors to save some money but my goal is to uh there's there's a school elementary school across the street Street. I want to have basketball programs. I want to have. I met with um, with a guy named Tom Butler in the city for a GED and fast for workshops. Um, on October, we're hosting the 35th Police District. We're having their community meeting right there at St. James. I want anything that goes on in the community, I want them to be a part of St. James because that's what we're called to do. We're called to be a beacon of light. We're called to offer whatever you need. You can at least come there. And maybe if I don't have the answer, but I could call Gordon and say, hey, Gordon, listen, this is what I need. Or I call John Coleman, say, John, bring the camera. I can call Bass and say, hey, Rev, listen, I need some help. Can you help me with another church that can help me reach these resources? And so. So um, you are working with other churches. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Other churches in the district. I, I can't stand here and say that I've done by myself without uh, Morrisville and Pastor Wendy. I can't say without Pastor Joe from Fawsington, uh, Brubaker from uh, both of them, as a matter of fact. Lindy, one of her, her drummer, mows our lawn for free, mows our back our back graveyard for free and then reverend randy brubaker invented invited me to his ministerium he gives me uh wisdom and wise counseling advice uh from around the corner at uh and what what's that law and crescentville um well and you're part-time right now and you're working a full-time job right? i am so my shift is and this is just the season that i'm in and i and while i'm young and have this energy i want to use it i'm at the church 9 a.m to 2 p.m and then i work i'm at the new comcast going up on the 32nd floor i do sheet metal and uh, we're putting up all the HVAC systems for the new building at 19th and Arch, which is where I came from tonight. Yeah. But uh, I'm there at uh, from 3 p.m. until 11.30 p.m. And then back in the morning. So this morning when I got up, I had breakfast with the pastor at Alani Baptist at 7 a.m. Then I had the funeral for Jack Snight at Foam Call. Uh, what's the pastor's name? Uh, Chubby guy, Bob, I forget. Bob Coleman. Bob Coleman, yeah. Bob Coleman. He opened up the doors and was excited that we were there. And uh, well, then from there, we went back to the church. And what, we uh, mm -hmm. what can CD, CDT do to help you? There's resources that you all have. Um, ab absolutely. Are there financial dollars that we need? Sure. Was there an electrical fire two weeks ago in a building? Absolutely. Are there lights that are out and we find drug paraphernalia right outside? Absolutely. Are there, is there a front door lock and there's kids in the basement right now and the, the lock doesn't work and the guy's charging us? We had six different companies and the average price is five twenty five. So yes, there's always financial help. Uh, there's, there's just extra dollars that we can always use. But I don't want to be the church that, oh, we need, we need money, we need money. We also could just use some bodies. Oh, I forgot to tell you that um, our, our parsonage, right? This is the key thing that I really love. Our parsonage that Reverend Moore stayed in, everybody stayed in. It's a big eight bedroom mansion, right? And so instead of me staying there, I said, listen, that's eight bedrooms. I don't need all those bedrooms. We're going to turn it into a missionary home. And I'm meeting with a group on Monday at 10 a.m. before I go to work. And we're going to try to find out what we can do to put wooden bunk beds so other conferences from Iowa and other conferences within our denomination can come here, stay there. Instead of paying $1,000 to stay at a hotel, stay right here in our parsonage, which is eight bedrooms big, do some work at the church, and then go do some work in the, in the city. 
And um, but I think that I think that yes, we need some help. But then there's also some resources. There's some things that you all need. I needed a hundred Spanish Bibles, and I called one of our brethren churches, and they said, "Here, take this number." So there's some people that you all know. There's some things that we're trying to do uh, in the church to help just meet these needs. We're trying to do a um, a new food pantry because no, we don't have a big homeless population, but the hungry statistics in Alni are growing tremendously and so there's a there's a hungry population and Morrisville said I said listen can you help me out with that they're coming in and they're building us a pantry and not only are they building it but they're supplying the non-perishable food so those are the things that I think CDT it's like church start I walked in here it was like it's about three members but I had to do a lot of cleaning but I, again I can't say that I did it by myself it was so many people who are still continuing to flood the gates I do have to say that this is my first appointment and when I walked in July 1, John Coleman, I was discouraged. I said, look, Lord, why me? I was like, Jesus, if this cup could pass by me, yep. then please. But it's stuff like this. It's people like CDT that say, come present. Tell me what your vision is. Tell me what you want to do. Let's see where we can help. Um, there's some of the senior members, and our, our next goal right now is to get a screen projector. Because, I mean, I, I'll say to them, let's read the Psalter or let's read, let's do the Apostles' Creed. And they'll try to read it, but they can't read it. So now I want to get a, want to get a screen projector so that they can see the words. So that, you know, instead of them having to try to fumble, they can be able to see it on a new screen that's projected. And then when we have some community meetings, if there's some PowerPoints, like the Fastful Workshop, he asked about that. So that he can also be showing it while people are doing it and on their laptops or, you know, so it can be reflective and showing them. That's our next big thing is just how can we make this guy? gospel so everybody can have access to it well thanks john we appreciate it yeah. god bless you and if you have any questions just check us out we're on social media but uh again i apologize if i'm not able to be there right now but um, it's my yeah. fault no one else's <laughs> uh, but god works in mysterious he ways does, he does he does at least i got a chance to spend some time with you yes 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 thanks, thanks.